And in order to understand the quantum mechanical effects on molecules and the interaction between electrons within the molecules and the electrons from one molecule to another, we have to understand how things are quantized. And in this case, we're going to talk about something called photochemical reaction, because one of the reactions, one of the chemical reactions that can occur is simply due to the fact that they can receive a quantized amount of energy in the form of a photon, causing a reaction to take place, a chemical reaction to take place. One such example is, for example, the oxygen molecule in the atmosphere. If it gets hit by a photon that has sufficient amount of energy, that photon is capable of splitting the oxygen molecule into its individual constituent parts, oxygen gas by itself. Of course, those molecules tend to quickly reform back into an oxygen molecule, but the fact that they can be dissociated by the influx of an energy, a quantized form of energy like a photon, that is quite amazing. Now let's understand a little bit more about what that energy would have to be. First of all, let's take a look at the formation, the enthalpy of formation of oxygen gas in its uh, simple state like that as a single oxygen molecule or single oxygen atom. Take a standard oxygen molecule and if you have a half a mole of this and you add some energy to it, you can dissociate it, but that will require 249 kilojoules per mole of oxygen gas, single uh, atom oxygen gas uh, that is formed. And so, for example, if you want to dissociate a whole mole of these atoms, you will need twice as much energy to form, to take one mole of, of oxygen gas in its normal form and dissociate it into its individual atoms like this. So in this particular equation, to turn one mole of this into two moles of oxygen like this, you would need 249 kilojoules times two, or 498 kilojoules, kilojoules of energy. But now let's take a look at this in the form of a single single reaction. If you take a single molecule like this, how much energy do you need to turn into two individual oxygen atoms like that? Of course, uh, let's rewrite the equation here. To take a full mole of oxygen gas like this, you add energy to it to turn into two oxygen moles of oxygen gas like this. The delta H of formation, of course, would be twice as much, or 498 kilojoules per mole. Actually, I think it's a little bit more than 249 kilojoules. I think it's 249.4. So to be absolutely correct, it would be 249.4 kilojoules. That makes this about 499 kilojoules per mole, per mole rounded up. All right, so now that this for mole, how much would it be for a single atom of oxygen gas? So the energy required, the energy for one oxygen molecule to dissociate into its individual components is going to be equal to the amount needed for a whole mole, which is 499 kilojoules per mole, and divided by Avogadro's number, n sub a, which means 499 kilojoules per mole, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, per mole. That would be atoms per mole or molecules per mole. And then, of course, you have 499,000 divided by 6.02 e to the 23rd, and you get the energy required to split apart a single oxygen molecule that is equal to 8.29 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that's the energy required for a single one of those reactions. So what kind of photon can bring in that kind of energy. So what kind of photon are we talking, talking about? Well, notice that the energy of a photon, HF, is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of that photon. And since we know that the speed of light for a photon is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, we can say that the frequency can be written as the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So here we can write that the energy is equal to H times C over lambda. The reason why we made that transformation is it's a lot easier to think about molecules in terms of their wavelength, or I should say photons in terms of their wavelength, instead of their frequency. So now solving this for wavelength, we have wavelength is equal to hc divided by the energy, and so Planck's constant being 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, multiplied times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and divide the whole thing by the energy, which we just calculated to be 8.29 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. 
And this will tell us what kind of photon is able to split an oxygen molecule into its two individual oxygen atoms, like that. All right, so take the inverse of that, because I already had that in my calculator, times 6.626e to the 34 minus times 3e to the 8 equals n. This is equal to about 240 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which is 240 nanometers. Wow, what kind of photon is that? Well, remember that visible light, the wavelength of visible light, ranges from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. 400 nanometers, that's kind of bluish purplish light, 700 nanometers is reddish light, so for the various colors in the rainbow, the wavelengths of the photons vary from 400 to 700 nanometers. So what does it mean when you need a photon in the atmosphere that has a wavelength of 240 nanometers? Well, that would have to be a photon of ultraviolet radiation. And so this is one way in which the Earth's atmosphere protects us when ultraviolet radiation comes into the atmosphere and it has wavelengths of 240 nanometers or shorter Whenever it hits an oxygen molecule, that energy will be absorbed by oxygen molecule, split the oxygen up, and the dangerous UV radiation has been annihilated or eliminated. So oxygen in the atmosphere does protect us from ultraviolet radiation. But the bottom line is, you can see that we have what we call photochemical reactions, where a physical chemical reaction takes place by the influx of energy in a quantized matter like a photon, taking oxygen gas and separating it into its two individual oxygen atoms. And that's the definition of a photochemical reaction.